Lightroom Classic has been newly updated. This is version 11.0.1. Today I'm going to show you how you can get better localized brushing adjustments using intersect masking. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. The latest update in Lightroom is a big breakthrough for Lightroom and I wanted to show you some things that I've discovered with it today. Now there's been a lot of videos put out about the new uh, masking techniques that you can do in Lightroom and I want to show you something that I don't think I've seen yet on the internet but I'm going to show you my take on doing uh, localized brush adjustments using the intersect masking tool in Lightroom. That being said, I still do all of my critical local adjustments in Photoshop using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop because the masking in Photoshop is is better it's much more feathered more realistic but this new lightroom technology is not bad and for basic adjustments it's fine let me show you what i mean the image on the left was a mask that i made in photoshop using the tk8 plugin for photoshop can you see how nice and feathered and exact that mask is compare it to the image on the right which is a lightroom highlights mask they're both highlights masks, but you notice the one in the right is a little more blocky. It's not quite as defined. It's really good, to be honest with you, but it's nowhere near the precision of the mask I can make with the TK8 plugin in Photoshop. However, for basic adjustments, and if you don't want to get into big, elaborate Photoshop edits, this Lightroom masking is really good now. And for some photographers, that's all they need. But on my part, I'll do basic things here and I'll save the critical stuff for Photoshop and the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Well, let me show you how this works. Now, I've done some basic edits on this image. And what I want to do is come up to this new uh, masking tool. So let's click right here. And I'm sure you've watched a lot of videos on the internet as well as I have. But I don't think I've seen this technique anywhere that I'm going to show you today. And I'm referring to using the brush tool, intersecting it with other tools like the color range tool or the luminance range tool. The first thing I want to do is show you how I can target just the highlighted areas and then be able to brush just the highlighted areas in. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to come here and grab the luminance range tool here and I got my little eyedropper and I'm going to find some light tones here that I want to lighten up. Okay. So like maybe right here, I'm going to click. And when I do that, you can see there's my mask and now I can refine my mask. If I take this slider and move it to the left, I'll broaden the mask. If I move it to the right, I'll make the mask more narrower. And then I can even uh, tighten up the actual area that it's picking by pulling in on these handles here on the left and on the right. I can take it more into highlights to the right or find the area that I want right in here. And this is the feathering side for the highlights. Okay, so I might just bring it in. I'm not worried about the clouds up there. I'm only dealing with the trees. So I'm just going to feather this in. So I have a little bit of cloud selected here and up here. I might just pull that in a little bit more because uh, if I get near the edges of these trees, I don't want the clouds to be affected. So I think that's pretty good. And now let me see how this feathering is here. Okay, I want to bring this in just a little bit because, again, I just want to target the highlight areas here. Okay, once I've done that, I can take the exposure adjustment and start to drag it to the right. And you can see those highlighted areas get lighter. Now, it looks not real good right now, and what I'm going to do is be a little overboard here because I'm going to paint these adjustments in, okay? So right now, it doesn't look good, but wait do you see how it looks when I'm done. So there's the exposure, and I might give it a little bit more saturation as well, okay? Maybe something like that. The next thing I'm going to do is... See where it says luminance range in this ellipse right here? Click right here, and what we're going to do is intersect with a brush, okay? We're intersecting it with a brush. Now, notice one thing here, or two things. It's in the invert uh, position by default, and it's in erase mode by default. I haven't quite wrapped my head around all this yet, but I'm still thinking about it. But believe it or not, this is the way you need to add these targeted adjustments. 
in the erase mode and in the invert mode and it does it for you when you click on that intersect with a brush now i need to set my brush up so what i'm going to do is see the flow i'm going to use a lower flow because i want to build my adjustments up slowly so with a low flow i'm going to have to paint more to bring the adjustments out okay and my feathers around 58 percent which i think is good and i'm going to bring my brush size down just a little wee bit now you see all the light areas everywhere watch when i start to brush an area they'll all go away and now you only see that light area here do you see that isn't that kind of cool so now i'm just targeting the highlighted areas now if i paint into darker areas it will not be affected because if i hover over luminance range you can see that's what the luminance range is selecting okay and if i hover over my brush tool that's what i painted on my brush tool see how sloppy that is but here's the result on the mask is that cool so here's the luminance range here's what i'm painting with the brush and here's my result okay so now i can come over and paint highlights anywhere i want and i could be sloppy because it's only targeting the highlighted areas okay so let me get this guy over here and I have a low flow so I can, uh, the more I paint, the more the adjustment comes out and I can be kind of sloppy. Like I said, because that, um, luminance range is protecting me. So I can come here now this tree, I can come down in here and let's just, you know, target areas that I want to highlight, but I can be very painterly here and just get the areas that I want. Okay, and I know this tree is getting some highlights down in here, and this tree in here, these trees here. Okay, so here is my before. Now, if I come up to this mask here and click this eye, here's the before and here's the after. Isn't that cool? And again, if I hover over this mask, you can see how my adjustments got targeted. And again, the brush looks like this, very sloppy, but it's only going to let me paint the adjustments where the luminance range is. Okay? So that's what I have so far. Now I could come here and if I wanted to, uh, if they're too bright, I can pull back on the exposure a little bit and maybe add a little bit more saturation there if I want. And I could maybe add a little bit of, uh, let's see, how about a little bit of texture just to make those pop a little bit more. Let's see what a little clarity does. Yeah, a little clarity in there too. But again, here is the before and here's the after. But that's localized adjustment. So you can just paint those effects just where you want them. Now, let's say you added this highlight on this tree, like I added the highlight on the tree, but you say, you know what? I don't want it. Well, how can I get rid of it? Well, that's a good question. Here's what you need to do. Right now, we're erasing. I know it sounds odd. We're erasing to add the adjustment. So we have to do the opposite to take the adjustment away. So instead of hitting erase, click on either one of these brushes. I'm going to click on A and you can adjust your size accordingly and your flow. I'm going to leave the flow up to 100% density at 100%. And all I have to do is paint over this and I remove it. You see that? So anytime you want to remove an adjustment, instead of erase, you want to add by clicking on a regular brush. And if you want to put that back, just click on erase again. And now I can come here and add that back in. It's just that simple. It took me a while to wrap my head around this, but once I got it, I thought, oh, this is really good. I got to make a video on this. Now let's say we want to darken the area in these clouds, these darker areas of the cloud. So what I can do here is create a new mask click this and let's select the sky give it a second or two to select the sky and once the sky is selected which it is and by the way i have my mask is black and white you can change that by coming here and saying show it as a color overlay i like mine as black and white because i'm used to working in photoshop with the tk8 panel and it's working with layer masks and they're always black and white so i'm just really used to the black and white so I'm going to set mine back to uh, white on black. But you can set these masks up any way you want. Okay, so now I'm going to shut the overlay off because what I want to do is I just want to select the dark areas of the sky. So what I'll do is this is going to be a little more elaborate here. So I'll go ahead and intersect. I'll click the ellipse, intersect with this time I'm going to, I'll intersect with a luminance range. And let me shut my overlay off again. And I want to select these darker tones right here. Okay, now I have to make some adjustments here. So let's adjust the feathering here. Actually, I got to pull this in. No, I got to pull this over this way. It's these areas right here. Okay, 
So now let me adjust this feathering this way and out this way. See, I want some nice feathering here. And let me see how I want this to go. Maybe somewhere around there because the light areas will get the effect. Okay, so let's feather that a good bit like so. Let me see. Do I want to narrow this in a little bit? So I'm going to widen the snow. And then I could slide the whole thing one way or the other. And I think that's a pretty decent feathering in there. You can see some nice uh, softness around the edges here. And again, these masks are not as accurate as you would get in Photoshop. So normally I wouldn't do this here, but I want to show you how you could do it here in a pinch. Remember, the lighter areas are going to get the adjustment. Okay, so that's good. Next, what I need to do is intersect this luminance range with a brush. So intersect with a brush all right and now let's go ahead and take the exposure and let me just darken those areas now you'll notice all the areas are getting dark but i just want to brush in the areas i want to go dark so i'm going to do that now remember i have my brush tool and you'll notice it's in the erase mode and in the invert mode i'm going to get myself a larger brush by just pulling the size up more and i have a very low flow but watch what i'll do all these other dark areas will go away when I start brushing here. And you notice I can just start brushing that up. I can go over any dark area and just brush in the amount I want. But this is pretty cool and it's pretty effective. And we couldn't do this in Lightroom before, but now we can. But just like that. I think it does a pretty good job. Again, let's take a look. Here's the sky I selected. Here's the luminance range, which is affecting the entire image. However, it's intersected with the sky and the brush is intersected with the luminance range. And you can see it's a very sloppy brushing, but we can look here and see here is my result. Isn't that amazing? Pretty cool stuff, right? And now we could take a look uh, on this mask. Oops, let me open this back up here. Here's the before and here's the after. So that's another thing we can do. I'm going to show you one more thing we can do. You may want to go back and watch this video a few times just to wrap your head around it. I have to be honest with you. This Lightroom masking is, is pretty powerful, but it's not very intuitive. It's not very user-friendly. So after you get onto it, it's not that bad. But you may need to watch this a few times. The last thing I'm going to do is lighten up this grass right down here, okay? And I'll show you how I do that. Let's create a new mask. Now that's green grass, right? So what do you think I would use here? Color range? I think so. Let's click on color range and let's just grab some of the green here like so. And it makes a really nice mask. Now I could come here and refine that mask by adjusting this slider. If I move it to the left, it'll get a little tighter. If I move it to the right, it'll broaden out. But I think right about here looks pretty good. Now, I only I want to brush in this adjustment. So the next thing I'll do is take the exposure and I'll just lighten up the exposure. Now, it's going to lighten up all the greens in the image. And I'm going to go a little overboard here. I'm going to lighten it up and I'll maybe add a little extra saturation to the green as well. And now I need to paint that adjustment on. So I'm going to come up here to the color range, click on the ellipse, and I want to intersect it with a brush. Okay, and let's see how big do I want my brush to be. I'll make it a little, uh, right around there. And again, I have 58 on the feather and the flow at 26. So now you see green is lightened up and oversaturated everywhere, but now I'm just gonna paint right along this grass here. Now you see I'm just brushing across here with that low flow, and I can add as much of that lightning as I want in here. So that's pretty nice. It's a nice controlled adjustment. Okay, so now we can see here's the before and just watch the green grass and here's the after. So isn't that pretty cool? And again, if we hover over color range, we can see the targeted area. We can see where I brushed with a real sloppy brush, but here's my result on the mask. And it's a great result, except for this area right here, I overpainted and that's a bit of a problem. If I wanted to get rid of that, all I need to do is get out of the erase brush mode by uh, clicking A. What I'll do is make my brush a little smaller. I'm just using my left bracket key and I'll just come here and erase it off of here. And that way it won't be there. Okay. And now if we look at the mask, it looks like that. And now let's see what the adjustment looks like. So that's what the adjustment looks like. Now let's toggle it off. Here's the before and here's the after. And then we can go back here and fine tune. Like if it's too light, 
we can ease back on it a little bit. And if it's too saturated, we can pull back on the saturation a little bit. And again, here's the before and here's the after. Now, if you want to see your overall before and after, just come up here where it says masks and untoggle this. There's the overall before and there's the overall after. Well, there you go, everyone. So if you want better, improved, localized brushing results in Lightroom, follow my technique. But if you really want to get really precise adjustments, you still need Photoshop. And again, as you can see, the image on the left is a mask made in Photoshop. It's a lot more detailed. It's a lot more feathered compared to the Lightroom highlight mask on the right which is a little more blocky, so it's not quite as precise. So if you want precision, you still need Photoshop. But if it's a basic masking job, Lightroom will do it for you. If you haven't updated Lightroom Classic yet, you need to do it. This is version 11.0.1, .1, and you can take advantage of all the really great new masking technology. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, Happy editing.